impacts within the Open JS Foundation. We have impact, growth, um, at large, and emeritus projects. If you are a member of a project within that category and you want to um, come and, and introduce the, the project, then I'd ask you to come up and like queue. Um, and then once it's uh, your turn, we can just give, like, give you the microphone and do like a quick three minute or so intro to the project, who's involved with the project, what some of the goals of the project are, um, if there's any specific um, requests or calls for participation or needs or whatever that the project has, then we'll give you a, a moment to um, to make that request of the room. Sound reasonable? Make sense? Groovy. Thank you, Christian, for your enthusiastic nodding. So we have five impact projects. Um, Node, OBS, um, Appium, jQuery, Dojo, and Webpack. So if you are um, here on behalf of any of those projects or want to um, make any um, announcements on any of those projects, let me ask you to come forward. And Christian, can you come talk to about Appian for us? I can't, I can't since, yeah, since, the, um, since Jonah and Dan aren't here. I mean, what should I talk about? Yeah, we started Appium a while ago to support testing on mobile because it's really different. Every Android and iOS different have native automation strategies. Um, you can use them, but if you want to write a test that works for both at the same time, um, it's going to be problematic. And Appium tries to overcome this problem by uh, providing a test interface based on the Webflow protocol, um, which is a REST API client, and you can send HTTP requests. Um, you can do it with any language, and it allows you to use run um, mobile tests um, on Android and iOS at the same time and scale it up um, as, as you wish. Um, yeah, then there's a big, the ecosystem is quite large because there are many sub-modules that try to uh, support different native automation strategies. And um, I think currently um, uh, Jonah and Dan Graham, they're on top of, um, they're streaming the project more or less. And um, yeah, if you want to get a vote, um, let them know, let me know. Uh, thank you. Thank you all. Um, is there anyone here on behalf of Webpack? Because I know Dojo and jQuery aren't here. No, sad. OK. Um, I'll just quickly, uh, I don't think I need to introduce what jQuery is. No? OK, good. Um, but if you want to um, reach out to that project, the representatives are Dave Meppen and Timmy Will. Um, I think largely they're working on infrastructure and um, just that basic kind of routine um, release management and that sort of stuff. But those guys are the reps for jQuery. Um, on the Dojo side, Dojo is another modern web framework which is very popular within enterprises. Um, the wonderful Dylan Scheinman and also Matt Gad are representatives from uh, that project to the OpenJS Foundation. They did send their regrets, um, but awesome, awesome team. Um, and Webpack, probably another project I don't need to introduce. Um, Sean Larkin and even um, Stinsberg are the representatives to the CBC from Webpack. Um, so. um, let's see, moving on to our next category, uh, we have six growth level projects um, within the OpenJS Foundation. And super quickly, growth projects are um, projects that have some key objectives that they're trying to reach, maybe like, for example, to grow the number of contributors or to increase the number of like, you know, highly visible implementations, that sort of stuff. Um, and we have six wonderful growth projects. Architect, Intern, Node-RED, uh, WebDriver, WebKint, and Mocha. And I know some folks from those projects are here, so if you are a maintainer or contr contributor to one of those projects and you want to come up and introduce it, please uh, come forward. Yeah, yeah, I know you're here, so I'm like... Okay, so I was just explaining, uh, explaining Appium. So WebDriver.io is the client to run tests for instance, for mobile uh, on Appium, 
or to run browser automation tests. And um, you can compare it with Selenium, but Webpacker IO has a different design. Goal is more framework that um, you know takes care of a lot of tasks that you would do normally if you use things like Selenium. It's so full framework. Uh, you can run tests synchronously. Um, and yeah, um, if you want to get involved with the project, uh, we have one maintainer, one of the steam committee uh, here in the room as well. Um, so that's exciting. I haven't been seeing him um, um, so far. Um, yeah, if you want to get involved, let me know. Um, it's exciting. Thank you. Uh, question? Yes. yes. How do I contact you to do I just talk to you after the session if I want to get involved in Atheum? Or like, what would be a good way to reach out and get involved? Um, just uh, come to the reception and say hello to me, um, or um, send me a Twitter uh, message or all the ways, GitHub, whatever you like. All right. Uh, hi, I'm Chris. Um, I work on Mocha, uh, which is a testing framework. Um, we are always looking for more maintainers and could do with the help with that sort of thing. Um, I've also worked, uh, I don't think Nick is here, but I've worked on Node-RED. Um, Node-RED is a, it's like a flow-based, low-code programming platform. Um, originally was uh, written to uh, essentially work with a lot of IoT devices, and it works really well for that. And works really well with uh, MQTT um, and that sort of thing. Um, and there's a, a really big um, ecosystem uh, around uh, creating custom integrations and flows and setup, and um, that tool can be found at nodered.org. That's all I know. Okay, um, so that leaves Architect, uh, which is helmed by Brian uh, LaRue and uh, the company, his company, Begin. Um, also, Chris Borchers is uh, representing that project on the CPC. Um, so you can reach out to either of those uh, persons. Um, Architect is a, uh, a serverless framework. Um, and uh, if you have any, if you want to get involved with that project, uh, Intern is another project from the Dojo team. Um, so again, you can reach out to Matt Gad and Dylan Scheiman. Um, to learn a bit more about that, but it's a test stack for JavaScript and TypeScript. Um, let's see, then um, WebHint. Um, Anton uh, Moleda, I don't think, he, I think he's here this weekend in Berlin, but I don't think he's at this event. Um, and he's at Microsoft. Uh, he's, he represents that project on the CPC and is very active there. Uh, it's a linting tool. Um, I think these are pretty common projects though, so most of y'all probably don't need too much uh, info about them. Um, all right, at large. So um, we have 15 at large projects, which I kind of like the, the, the kind of the bell curve, I think, um, for our projects. But uh, at large projects are um, mostly projects that are in like maintenance mode. They're still actively used, but um, they don't necessarily have uh, lots of resource requirements or needs from the foundation, so they are um, they're kind of trucking along. And, and if they need something, they can, or if they have an objective that they want to uh, get more foundation resources to uh, to to reach, then they can uh, upgrade to a growth status. But uh, th these projects are kind of doing their own thing and, and happy to do it. We have 15, as I said. Um, ESLint, Esprima, Express, LibUV, Lodash, Marco, Message Format, Moment, Globalize, Runt, a Hospital Run, PEP, QUnit, JerryScript, and Interledger. Um, if there are folks from any of those projects who would like to come forward and um, uh, chat about uh, what you're working on or the maintainer communities. Hi, Emily. Um, maintainer for message format, which is a language for localization, uh, working with plurals and all sorts of interesting things that you might want to do with the text in whatever you're working with. Um, I, I think your description earlier is right, we're doing pretty well at the moment. Um, 
The, um, the other name missing from there is Alex Sexton, who originally started that project, but um, I think most of the code is, more of the code is now mine than his. Um, but yeah, uh, I also mess around with all sorts of other localization things in JavaScript because it's a weird sort of fun. Very important. Um, I'm excited by the number of those types of projects that we have in the foundation, too. Oh, yeah, and the actual reason why I'm here is because I ended up getting onto the uh, cross project council for the OpenJS. Um, other recs from any at large projects? Okay. Uh, in the interest of time, I won't um, I won't like describe too many of them. Um, other than to share uh, a couple of of kind of things, I think uh, the maintainers would appreciate. Um, uh, first off, I want to shout out to uh, the Moment team and Maggie Pint, who is um, frequently represents the now I guess OpenJS Foundation at um, TC39, formerly. Uh, the JS Foundation at TC39. Um, and kind of on that note, like the project is really looking to get a lot of its um, uh, work kind of brought into the uh, spec and then kind of wrap up. Uh, another project that I think uh, is interested in um, support to kind of conclude or move on from its work is actually Hospital Run, uh, which is a really cool application um, that is, it's a, um, offline first application actually, they are looking for um, new maintainers. So uh, if you are interested in working on a real world um, app that does a uh, project that, that really helps a lot of people, um, definitely talk to me about Hospital Run because they would love your assistance. Um, let's see. And then last but not least, we have five emeritus projects um, which are so called because uh, we um, value their contributions uh, to the ecosystem, but they are functionally concluded. Um, so we're not really recommending that people go um, adopt these projects or use these projects. But uh, that being said, we feel like the word emeritus really does convey some respect and some appreciation for um, the time and the effort that they put in. Uh, and so just a quick shout out and pour one out for jQuery UI, jQuery mobile, require JS and So, um, uh, anyway. Yeah. Um, so, this was gonna, this was intended to be sort of short and sweet, just so we can um, kind of, yes? Missing Jed. I am missing Jed. I'm sorry. No, um, I, I just, uh, Jed should be, I think, was did Jed opt? Emeritus, that's right. Yeah. So, so that makes it six. See, I told you I had almost all of them memorized. There we go, poor Jed. There we go, Jed. That was Alex too. Um, He's still alive. He, Alex is still there. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so that 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 sort of just kind of recaps the the JS Foundation projects. Um, you know, a little bit later, we'll be having a session for the CPC itself. So uh, if there are specific questions from this group about the Cross Project Council, I definitely recommend um, attending that session. But um, if there are questions or, um, you know, ideas about any of these projects, like I can open the floor, we can conclude early, we can have a dance party. Yeah, yeah, you are. You're still dancing. <laughs> Okay, cool. All right, well, that's all I have. So, um, like, this session is focused on JS Africa, and, like, so coming from the Node context and the Node Foundation, um, I'm curious, like, uh, you know, as part of the community committee in uh, Node, uh, how no, how y'all would be interested in kind of rethinking the interface with Node 1. Uh, I'd like to do that work and help with that. Um, I don't know what that looks like for y'all, um, but that's something I'd be interested in helping with and just kind of building relationships around. So if you're interested in that, definitely either chat now or I'd love to talk to you at some point. So. 
I love that. Um, you know, one of the reasons why we did a merger was so that our project communities could collaborate more uh, closely together. And I think this is a prime opportunity um, to do that uh, this week. So strong plus one parts. Yeah. How do you see this growing uh, gap now with that it's merged into the uh, together with the No Foundation and the Open Jazz Foundation? Do you see like there being more projects onboarding and like how do you encourage more more projects to to join this? Because like um I think from a sort of more like user perspective, like I know sort of that the Jazz Foundation existed and uh, that's in the Open Jazz Foundation, but like if I would bring up a project, I think it's still sort of like um, unclear often how, how you can get, uh, get into that and contribute to it. That's a great question. Um, so one of the things that we are also hoping to solve here is that when there were two foundations, no J JS Foundation and the JS Foundation, it was a bit confusing for people who had projects that were looking for a third place, so to speak, which one they should go to. Um, and it just wasn't obvious. So I think that kept a lot of people from potentially joining either group. Um, so we're hoping that the merger also makes it more clear that there's really one ecosystem and we care about all of it. So um, that's one kind of, that's another goal. Um, through this transition process, we have sort of had to figure out and negotiate right, based on how the JS Foundation used to do a project onboarding, what worked with that, what didn't work with that, what makes sense for the node community, like how do, how do we sort of uh, kind of combine our processes in a way that makes sense. So the conversation around like project onboarding is very much active and alive. Um, you'll probably, if you go to our OpenJS Foundation bootstrap, well, I'm just not bootstrap anymore, Cross Project Council repo, um, you can see a couple of different uh, issues and PRs that are like proposals for how we do project onboarding moving forward. We do have a bunch of projects that are starting to talk to us now, like because it, it, it makes more sense, like, oh, we go to the Open Jazz Foundation. Um, and we're, we're working with them to figure out like what process makes the most sense for that community and how to have these conversations in a open but also respectful way and that kind of thing. So yeah. Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Manuel from Package Maintenance Team. I'd like to understand how uh, you evaluated the at-large project, the 15 at-large project, because for example, in uh, our team, uh, we have uh, found uh, difficult to define uh, how to evaluate uh, the project well, uh, or based on the lots, uh, for example, based on, on issue and something else. So I'd like to know uh, the logic you applied. Thank you. So um, on the categories, we did, a, we did ask the projects to opt in to the category that they felt suited them. Um, we didn't apply any metrics when we were combining them. That is something that I think the CPC will take on in, uh, within the year uh, to sort of figure out, okay, how do we really define what an impact project is, what the goals of a growth project should look like, that kind of thing. Um, but at large, these 15 at large projects opted into that stage. Um, and we will probably reevaluate on an annual basis whether all of the projects that are in at large should really be there, or are there some that need to be emeritus or growth, or if they want to move on to, to impact. Um, but great question. I don't think so. Hi everyone, my name is Amelia Sain. I'm from Boston. I work at Boku. And um, sorry to ask you a really hard question, Jory. <laughs> this is like my first collaborator summit. I'm here because I have a problem I want to talk to you guys about it later. <laughs> but so hello everybody. Um, so my hard question is how have you guys kind of um, how are you consolidating these two different shifts of culture? 
right? Where you have like, no, yeah, there might be like team A, team B, team C, but team A, B, T, like they're all under node and they have one governance body at the end of the day versus like all of these distributed modules that are like, or packages or libraries that kind of have their own governance and their own way of doing things and their own. Like, I'm just curious, like how, I mean, just, just from, from a management perspective, it, it's like having like going from like one problem child to like 20 problem children. <laughs> and now we're having 21 problem children. So I'm just curious. Okay. Sorry for that. My favorite problem child. Yeah, Miles. Miles is like, <laughs> all right, answer. So, uh, whoa, that's, that's hot. Um, I don't think it's so straightforward. Um, it may not be as obvious for people who aren't super involved in Node, but Node itself, as you mentioned, has lots of different teams. Um, but the way in which Node works is like, we have the TSC and the ComCom, which are two separate like top level committees, and then we'll have a combination of different teams and working groups. Um, a subtle difference that you don't really know unless you've shown up to Node, and like even we get it wrong sometimes. We're like, let's make a working group about this, but we really meant a team. And the biggest difference is like, a team is a coordinated group of people working on a problem. Whereas a working group is a group that has been chartered to oversee a particular thing and they own it. So a good example of the difference here would be like release and build are working groups. Release owns releasing node. The TSC cannot go to the release team and even question what they're doing without dechartering the team. Build owns build. The TSC can't show up and tell the build team how to manage the resources without dechartering that team. The result of this is that even Node itself between the ComCom and the TSC and our various chartered working groups is a collection of different cultures, which is maybe not even totally obvious. Each within that has their own governance. So the modules team, for example, that I was talking about earlier, has drafted their own complete governance model that's different than any other team or working group within Node. So from a different culture's perspective, and I don't even think Node recognized that at first, we're actually already set up to have all of these kind of like smaller teams. I do think that thinking about how do we support and help lots of different teams that have different needs starts challenging some base assumptions we have. The Collaborator Summit was a really great example of that. Node has a travel budget. Um, I won't ask people to raise their hands because I don't want to put you on the spot about like whether or not you took funding, but a non-trivial number of people in this room had their trouble, travel completely sponsored by the foundation and it wasn't only Node.js. Well, one of the things that we realized was Perhaps this collaborator summit should really just be its own chartered working group under the cross project council that has its own budget that's not specific to Node. So it's not just like this Node specific thing. So we do definitely have to like question some of these things. But to me, I think that this challenge of like scaling all these bits will actually make all the processes and things that we have in place far more robust and reliable. Um, like just a general abstraction thing, like you solve it for one, two, or many. So like we had it solved for one, and now we're like immediately moving to solving for many. But when we figure out how to solve these problems for many, we'll be much better. You know, like right off the bat, one thing that I can say is like the TSC of Node used to like more or less directly report to the board of directors of the foundation, and not everyone who's on the TSC who's more focused on the technical direction of the project cares about all the things that have to do with running a foundation. It's not necessarily why they've come there. That resulted in a splitting our governance into a technical steering committee and a poor technical committee for a while, and there's so many acronyms, it's very confusing. Um, but we never really got like, the best measure of like having a committee that's focused on it. Now at the Cross Project Council, we have a community elected governing body that has an egalitarian governance structure where anyone from any project can come and participate. So it doesn't have the same barriers that a meritocratic governing body has, but that it's focused on solving these problems. And so the TSC can be far more focused on maintaining Node's technical infrastructure. And when we like, need money for a thing, we can just ask, ask the Cross Project Council. And the few reps from Node who care about that can go to the Project Council and advocate for it. Um, a very practical example would be changes to our chart. Our charter used to be chartered by the board, and any changes we wanted to make to our charter would have to go to a board meeting. And uh, it, it's frustrating. So it would mean that like, we would need to have those changes, we would need to have those changes approved as a pull request. That pull request would have to go to legal. Legal would have to review it and 
rubber stamp it all between board meetings that happen on a monthly cadence. Now we'll be able to just take charter changes to one of our bi-weekly or weekly cross-project council meetings. And as long as we aren't making what we call substantial changes, like it never even needs to go to the board. So yes, I think that like at face value, these things seem more complicated, but this extra layer of abstraction that we can have because we have more people working together is actually gonna create um, an ecosystem and process that's far more fine-tuned and far better equipped um, to support individual projects than just a foundation focused on one project. Sorry if that was more than you asked for. No, that was like a really, sorry. Huh? It's on, it's on. Yeah, wow. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, thank you, Miles. That was like a really thoughtful answer and I really appreciated like the thought that you put into that. I had so many things that I was thinking about while you were talking. And the first thing that like, I kind of was like, oh wait, I had this moment where you said working group and then you started talking about it in this way that was very definitive. That like, I was like, man, I'm becoming a super nerd because now I'm becoming pedantic. Because like, because you said working group and you're like, well, working group means this thing, for, you know, and like, it means this thing for no, and like now, like, does it mean the same thing universally, even across standards bodies, um, working groups mean different things in, in, in the web world, you know, which is like maybe more familiar to me than, you know, so um, it's just, just really funny, like, so I guess as, as a fresh perspective, I would say that like to the folks here who obviously really care about the digital ecosystem, um, to kind of question your own bias, as well as like do some exercises that are collaborative and intentionally painful um, with all of the new people and all of the new projects together around kind of redefining terms and norming on some things, right? Because I think that there's a lot of like things you take for granted, like there's conventions and you know things that are just the way we do things. That are also just kind of transparent and not necessarily obvious, and that's not constructive to like uh, onboarding and welcoming new members of the community. Yeah, we've definitely done some uh, painful warming already, but it's been pretty pretty positive. I think one thing to just uh, uh, wrap up so that the next session can start is just to uh, announce that um, the projects do get to maintain their own governance system within the project. So we're not mandating a specific uh, type of pro individual project governance. Uh, it's just the, the CPC operational structure, which we hope over time will become kind of invisible because it will just, we'll get these kinks work, kinks worked out and then we'll just be focused on providing services to the project in a really um, like fluid way. So anyway, thanks everyone for, um, for your questions and for your time. I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Manil for the next session. Um, appreciate ya.